What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today I have another very exciting video for you guys. Today I have something kind of interesting, it's a little different than what I normally do. Normally I do very accessible tutorials, tips and tricks stuff for everybody. This one's not inaccessible, but it does require a little more work. I'm going to show you guys how you can get ChatGPT integrated with your Samsung device uh, in kind of a native way using their API that they released this week. Now, if you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably heard recently in the last couple months about ChatGPT and generative AI and all the crazy stuff it can do. But the thing is, there really is no native Android app. In fact, if you go and look you know, on the Play Store, there's no app that really uses the ChatGPT latest AI and integrates it in a really nice and official way um, that's not going to give lots of information and stuff to a third party. So with the release of the new uh, ChatGPT uh, 3.5 Turbo API, Tasker, which is an app that's developed for Android and of course can be used on your Samsung phone as a result, uh, integrated the API and can now take advantage of that. Uh, Jao Diaz, who is the developer of Tasker, he showed this on his YouTube channel, which I'll link below. Um, and there's also some nice write-ups going over it, but no one really has a video kind of how to get these things on your phone in a very accessible video way, and that's what I'm gonna to try to do today. So if you're interested in getting ChatGPT on your phone, that's what this video is about. So um, you're gonna to need to do a few things. Over here, I already have it running on my S23 Ultra on the left. This one over here on the right, which is another one that I kind of use for testing, I'm gonna show you how to do all of the steps. So I'm kind of gonna follow along, which I'll link this below and all the links that are in the article as well. This Android Police article is a write-up even though it's not really step-by-step, step, it also links Jao Diaz's video. It has everything that you need to do, and we're going to follow the steps. So the first thing you need to do is download the Tasker app from the Play Store, which again, I'll also drop a link below to the Tasker app. But uh, this is free if you have a Play Pass subscription, but it is an app that has, you know, paid portion. It is a paid app if you don't have a Play Pass subscription. I already purchased it a long time ago anyway, but with my Play Pass subscription, it's also included. So if you have that, it'll be included. Um, the other thing that you probably want to download in addition to Tasker um, is the auto notification and auto apps for Tasker add-on. This is something that can make this a little more robust. Um, it's not something that you have to have, but it is something that would be nice to have um, if you are going to install and try to make this work in the nicest way possible. So with auto apps, you can also download auto notification. And again, I'll put chapters here. So if you don't want to watch every single step, you just want to see the end result, you can also skip ahead to do that. So once you download Tasker, of course, you go ahead and open up Tasker, you can kind of see everything that they can do. There's a few things you need to do, accept the terms of use. You need to allow it to draw over other apps, which is required in order for Tasker has some very deep integration that can do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, on your Android device. And I can make more videos on this later if you guys want to see it. Uh, turn off the battery optimization feature on your Samsung and turn off the vendor specific battery optimization. Now on the Samsung devices, that means you actually have to go into the battery settings and, and make sure this is turned off. Now I found that in my experience when using Tasker, uh, if you go into the actual battery, so let's scroll down and find it and I'll show you where this is. Inside battery, right? We're not optimizing. I don't want to do that right now. I hate how this thing drops down. It's very annoying. Um, if you go down to more battery settings, turn off where it says adaptive battery. And then also when you go to the background usage limits, just turn off, put unused apps to sleep and that will fix it. It, it shouldn't have any problems after that. So then the last one is to disable helper notifications which on here you can go disable show notifications. Um, that way you won't get a persistent pop-up from Tasker. So you can get rid of that as well. And then once you have that done, you're ready to go ahead and proceed uh, with Tasker. So here it just tells you again um, that all the battery optimization specific to your vendor are turned off. Otherwise Tasker won't really, won't really work. Um, so you, you can turn off stop reminding if you've already done that and then you know that you're good to go uh, in terms of that. So once you have Tasker installed, you might also want to open up if you if you installed the auto apps. Um, again, I already have auto notification. It's something that I already have. 
So it, it'll activate the auto notification, obviously. It also takes you to the Reddit page. Um, if you don't know about auto apps and auto notification and what these things do uh, within Tasker, then you may wanna learn more about it over on Reddit. But obviously auto notification tells you what it does. Uh, it creates advanced and interactive notifications uh, with integration with Tasker, which is something that you can then also do with ChatGPT. So it's a really nice app to have if you want the ChatGPT functionality with Tasker. So once you have that enabled, going back to that Android Police article, let me find it, there it is. Um, going back to that Android Police article, then you need to import the uh, ChatGPT profiles from TaskerNet, which Zhao Diaz put there. So once you do that, then you can go ahead and tap on the import ChatGPT profile, and then it'll tell you here kind of how it works. But there is one really important thing to note, and you should read this. You do, if you don't have an original OpenAI account, which means you didn't uh, create one when they first started ChatGPT late last year in 2022, you may need to add billing to your OpenAI account but you would have to do thousands and thousands of queries. Uh, I've done hundreds of them and I haven't even charged, you know, I, don't, I didn't even have to do this because I already had an OpenAI account from last year. I didn't have to add billing. So you may not have to if you have one, but even if you have to add a credit card, it's not even gonna charge you. Jal said he's done even more and he hasn't even paid one cent. So uh, you will have to get some OpenAI keys in order to do this. So go to import, checking the tasker link. It's gonna go ahead and import the data. You can see everything that you're getting, auto notification intercept, that's why I have auto notification there as well. Uh, the actions, auto notification query and reply. These are if you want to hook this into WhatsApp, you can do some cool stuff with that. Uh, and then plugin apps needed is auto notification. So then you can go ahead and hit yes. It's going to go ahead and import these and you can choose the type of assistant personality that you want. So this allows you to choose the default one, which is your very helpful assistant, which I'll just tap okay for now. And now you need to get those API keys from OpenAI that I was talking about before. Tap on user settings, then it'll ask you to log in. So then I log in with my Google account. You can use whatever it is that you use to sign in. Okay, so now once you log in with your Google account, you have your API keys here. You can go ahead and copy this or create a new secret key. Then once I have the uh, API key generated, just go ahead and paste that right here into the API key part of the tasker pop-up that we saw and then tap OK. Um, then it, of course, will ask if you want to enable all the profiles. I'll say yes. So I have all those features immediately. You can see some of the features that he's added, which are new chat, continue chat, voice chat, summarize WhatsApp's notifications, which is a nice one if you use WhatsApp, um, and then set assistant personality. So over here on my phone on the left, I have, again, an example of this running. And I personally find the voice chat is quite difficult to set up. If people are interested, I can make another video. This does require extra work though, because you also need to get an API key for the voice assistant itself um, using either Google Cloud or using a different voice provider. It can be a little tricky. I also find that because this is generative AI, you usually wanna use text chat with ChatGPT anyway, because it's going to create some text for you to use in your work or other context. So for that, um, again, you can change the assistant personality and I actually changed mine to you are a sarcastic but nice assistant. So it gives sarcastic responses, but it's still not rude. You can actually make the assistant very rude and Jal actually did a pretty um, interesting example of this over on his channel where the assistant actually curses at you and is very rude and you guys should definitely check it out. It's funny, I don't want to put it on my channel because I don't want cursing here for the video to get flagged, but he obviously doesn't care, and so it's on his channel, I'll link it below. So if you go to new chat, um, it tells you the personality of the assistant when you go to start a new chat. You can say something like, create a haiku about bears and snakes. And it's going to get the response from ChatGPT. And then you can see it. Silent serpents hiss, nature's clash, fierce and deadly, bear claws, strike of doom. That is an amazing haiku about bears and snakes, I have to say. So then, of course, you know, you can just go ahead and cancel. Um, you can also do continue chat if you want to ask a follow-up question there. Um, again, I find the text one to be best. If someone wants to see the voice, if you guys are interested, you could actually place replace Bixby with ChatGPT if you really wanted to. Um, 
But, you know, let's actually see an example of the sarcasm. So let's say, um, what should I eat for lunch? Let's see what the assistant has to say there, just as a fun one. Well, that depends on your taste, buds, budget, and location. But since you asked me, I recommended something that's edible and hopefully tasty. How does that sound? So a little bit of sarcasm, but not rude. So a very interesting one for sure. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial on how to actually get it set up. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, there's two key steps. You've got to set up Tasker, which I showed you how to do. You've got to get the API key from OpenAI, which again, technically could require a credit card number of billing information if you don't already have an OpenAI account from last year, but you won't get charged because you're not going to use this thousands of times a day. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon. I make tons of Samsung content. Check out my newsletter below, um, other cool stuff. And if you haven't bought a Galaxy S23 Ultra yet, check out the link in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.